Alright, so creating sci-fi cities in Blender is super easy. All you gotta do is create a cube, model the cube in the shape of a building, model some antennas and panels to put on top of the building, texture the building, add materials to the building, model some billboards, create any- Yeah, let's not do that. I mean, why would you go through all that when you could just have it done for you automatically? All you gotta do is head to rendercrate.com and download the Sci-Fi City Model Kit. Not only does this kit come with pre-made sci-fi building models, it also comes with its own city generator. Using this generator allows you to simply adjust a few parameters and sliders, and by doing so, create an infinite variety of cities. I'm going to explain a few of those parameters here, and by the end of the video, you should have everything you need to create a complex, detailed, and realistic sci-fi city from the comfort of your computer chair. Okay, after opening up your city generator file, you'll be greeted with a rather intimidating interface with a plethora of panels. For now, feel free to clear some of those out of the way, along with the fog and plain objects in the outliner, so we can just focus on the main generation of our city. The city you're looking at now is actually just one out of several pre-made cities which can be viewed by enabling them in the outliner. For the sake of convenience, we're going to stick to using City 1 to do our edits on. After enabling City 1, pop over to the Modifier tab and open up the City Modifier. In this upper section here, you can use the first two parameters to change the grid size of your city. Next, the random seed can be used to change the overall structure of your city with respect to where specific buildings are placed. Then, as you may have guessed, the overall scale slider adjusts the size of the buildings in the city, the height multiplier can be used to give your buildings a quick growth spurt, and the density slider can be used to change your city from a modern open concept to a claustrophobic nightmare. If the generation of your city is running a little slow on your PC, you can enable boxes, which will replace your buildings with simple cube geometry, and thus increase Blender's processing speed. Additionally, you can add roof lights and antennas to the tops of your buildings to increase the detail in your city. Finally, to annoy the residents of your city with excessive advertisement, check the billboard button to add billboards to your city. And uh, if you find that your city is now bathed in blinding purple light, you're going to need to relake the textures. To do this, go to the shader editor, select the billboard material, find the billboard image texture, and locate the folder called animated billboards. After selecting one of the images in this folder, you you can change the image node to image sequence, change the frames to 180, change the start frame to 0, offset to negative 1, and check cyclic. With that, your animated billboard advertisement should be operational. The next section in the modifier deals with the camera that your scene will use. The main purpose of these parameters is to increase the rendering speeds and reduce the processing time by only processing buildings that can be seen from the camera's perspective. To use this feature, the first thing that you're going to need to do is make sure that your scene camera and the camera selected in the modifier are in fact the same camera. Then the first checkbox here will enable calling to eliminate buildings out of the camera's view. And the other checkbox will eliminate buildings from the back side of the camera. The next three sliders will adjust the scope of the culling by allowing you to change the distance from the camera at which objects are deleted, as well as the threshold of deletion in the XY coordinate plane. After adjusting these parameters to your liking, you should have eliminated all buildings that are unnecessary to process and render from your camera's perspective, meaning your PC's fans won't have to accelerate to Mach 3 every time you make an edit. Moving down below, we have a feature that allows you to project or deform your city onto or around a surface or object. If you took the time to look at the other default cities in this modifier, you may have already noticed several examples of this feature being used. By selecting projection and selecting a projection object, you could project your city onto a surface. In particular, this is helpful for projecting your city onto a specific type of terrain. The deform feature, however, can be used for more complex shapes, such as spheres and spirals. You can use it in pretty much the same manner as the projection feature by selecting a deformation object. However, this time you can also enable a line rotation to normal, which will cause your buildings to orient themselves in the same direction as the object's normal vectors. Next, it's likely by now you've noticed that your city has no paths for roads between the buildings. And while we're probably all for the elimination of traffic, roads are kind of essential for a city to function in the real world. This is where the road mass section comes in handy. 
by enabling the checkbox, you can carve out sections in your city to place roads. Think of it as placing a set of grid lines on top of your city where buildings cannot be generated. You can now use the first slider to adjust the overall width of the roads in your city. The next two sliders can be used to adjust the initial X and Y positions of the roads. The two sliders after that can adjust the amount of roads on the X and Y axes, and the last two sliders can adjust the distances between the roads on the X and Y axes. Once you got your roads carved out, you can download some road assets from productioncrate.com to fill in the gaps and make your city traversable. Finally, the rest of the sections and the modifier have settings corresponding to the generation of particular buildings in your city. The city is made up of 8 buildings, therefore there are 8 sections in the rest of the modifier, and they all have the same parameters. The building section essentially controls the frequency of one building in your scene. Reducing this number here reduces the mask of a particular building, meaning a larger amount of those buildings will be seen in your city. Then the seed slider can be used to generate new random locations for that specific building. The last three sliders allow you to control the height, variance in height, and overall scale of a particular building in your city. If you're sick of using sliders, however, you can also use an empty to control the same properties. By enabling Use Empty, selecting a default empty, and deleting the default building mask, you can use an empty's location to determine the center of generation for a particular building and the scale of the empty along the z-axis to control the size of that particular building in your city. Finally, the billboards checkbox can be used to disable and enable billboards on a particular building. To finish this tutorial off, we can take a look at how to edit the building materials. As you would expect, all you need to do is select your city and go to the materials section. And since I can already see you falling asleep, I won't go through every node in this material setup, but only the most useful ones. First off, by going over to the roughness node group, you can change how shiny your buildings are. Next, the amount of bumpiness or visible creases or cracks in your buildings can be adjusted by changing the strength of the normal map. And uh, don't push this too far or your city will end up looking like one of those deep fried memes. And finally, the last thing I would consider changing is the light intensity of the various emission sources of the buildings. By using the light intensity node group, you can change the brightness of everything from windows to lights to roof lamps to exit signs to wires and other miscellaneous lights. And with that, you should have all the knowledge you need to bring your own sci-fi dystopia to life.